Yeah, you have to go to the new position. Rank. How are you going to trust the government when they're playing with your money and you bought a house there or something? One of the biggest things I notice with people. Look, you don't even need a uh, car here. You could walk it to everything. Yo, it's the Ja Ru, the damager of travel blogging. We brush in our teeth and we teach her in the Englishes to the youths. Being God, I know who to judge. I know how to judge. You're supposed to know how to judge because like she was saying, you have to eliminate certain things from yourself. I'm out here with my man. Dr. Lawai. Dr. Lawai? That's my channel when I go by Scott. I like it. His, and, and Scott, where are you from? From Tennessee. He's from Tennessee. He's from Appalachia. I'm out here with Chris Forte all day. All day, we, we keeping our teeth clean, we brushing our teeth, we educating the youth. Yo, Big Scott, so tell us about what you're doing out here, bro. Well, I, was a, I am a lawyer in the United States. Nice. And uh, the Supreme Court on March 13th of last year told us that we couldn't go to court anymore. So I was kind of like, uh, fuck it, I'll go somewhere else. I can practice law remotely. That's fucking great. So you're out here practicing law? <laughs> no shit, yeah, wow, no shit. Wow, bro. So. And, and what is it, international law? No, uh, I do two main things. One, I do uh, immigration, family-based immigration into the United States. Oh. Uh, so bring in your girlfriends or fiancés right, over from right. other countries. And then I do asset protection. Okay, so. we are gonna need to, to talk, bro, because like, I do things that are similar. Really? A little, no, I'm not a lawyer. I'm a little bit more of a, kind of one of those shady characters that floats in and out of circles, but I, see. I do help people. Like, that's what I do. I'm a fixer. Like, um, basically, I have leveraged contacts. And I have a lot of wealthy people in Southeast Asia that would be interested in the kind of services that, you know, we potentially we could create a package. I could offer you and what, you know, your capabilities and you would be able to obviously just get free traffic out of it. So there's things yeah, we sure. could discuss. Um, I'm happy I met you, man. It's good, see? Yeah, man, wow, what a small world. So, all right, so what do you think of, do of doing law in the Balkans remotely? Like, what do you think of your life out here? Like, it's, uh, I love the Balkans, I okay. really do. What my original plan, I was originally gonna go to uh, Southeast Asia, where of course y'all came from, but everything shut down, so we ended up here, but it was, uh, is a good choice. Um, the infrastructure from internet here is just amazing. I get better internet, quite frankly, than I did in Tennessee. You pay for the upgraded internet, yeah? Yeah, you do pay a little yeah, bit for yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, okay, but fair. But it's still, I mean, at home I was paying, what, $85 a month? And it wasn't as good Jesus, were you really? Yeah, no shit. Dog, no shit. I, I haven't been in America in close to a decade, <laughs> so I uh, can't even imagine paying money like that to live. Uh, we got inflation now. Oh, Troy, <laughs> oh my God, that's rough. Okay, so so you you had a crazy high cost of living even in Tennessee? Oh yeah, well, with my office and everything, God, I was spending nine, 10,000 a month. Word? Yeah. A month? Yeah. <laughs> Bro, you would be like a god in Vietnam, man. Or, or, or in, where were you trying to go in Asia? You were trying to go to the Philippines? Or? In Thailand. Oh, Thailand, Thailand and the Philippines. We were gonna split our time between the two. Okay, okay. And uh, did you have any cities in mind? Because, bro, I know a lot about this region. Davao's where I've spent the most time in the Philippines. Okay. Uh, I wanted to run up to Chiang Mai just to check it out, um, but Bangkok. That's funny because Chiang Mai was the first place I ever went in Asia, bro. And I went there on and off for like probably close to four or five years. Um, Muay Thai was what originally brought me there when I was younger. Seriously? Yeah, and then I met my wife in Australia and we ended up spending a lot of time in Thailand. And, you know, so I know the region really, really well. I remember when Chiang Mai didn't even have like, you know, the, the big super, super highway shit built yet. Right. And, it was like much more of a small town feel. It's been very discovered. It's a beautiful city, bro, great food, but it's very much on the hipster map now. Is it? Big time, big time. It's what everybody always talks about, so, you know, I just thought I'd go check it out. That's cheap, cheap, you can luxury living from what I can tell. Oh, it's very cheap. Yeah. It's uh, Chiang Mai is one of the cheapest places, in my opinion, in Southeast Asia, if you want to have like a city lifestyle. I mean, like there's, but bro, it's, I don't know. Right now is not the time. No. <laughs> no, and not for the foreseeable future. Anywhere no. in Asia, it's this is Bad. the place to be right now. I agree. I think the Balkans is the spot. Absolutely. So you're a remote worker. You're doing remote law. Yep. 
you're probably making a pretty good salary living in the Balkans. It must be a really nice lifestyle for you. Yeah, the salary, I mean, it's obviously diminished going remote because I can't do trial appearances and stuff like that anymore. Sure, sure. So that's why I'm focusing on those two. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> I make a lot more money uh, than I would need in this area. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I basically, I do consulting. So what I do is I leverage contacts. I build relationships and then I sell those relationships, mm -hmm. right? And I, I do pretty good. I don't, I'm not making myself fucking rich from it, but I'm having the ability to live overseas and be happy. And it was totally DIY, totally do it yourself, you know? And uh, I'm living pretty fucking comfortable out here. Like even on a bad month, like you're not spending that much money. Like, like the cost of living for what you get here, yes. I don't, it's just, I mean, like yeah, technically places in Asia are cheaper. But I mean, look at this guy's big sidewalks, there's fucking trees everywhere, people are walking, you know? You, know? you get to Southeast Asia, bro, people don't walk in Southeast Asia. Yeah. It's not a thing you do. <laughs> and the traffic is nuts where I've been. Saigon, bro, for four years. The big side geezy, baby. We lived in District 3, you couldn't even go outside without your fucking skin getting dirty and I mean, it was rough, man. Wow. We eventually moved out to like the towers out in District Two, um, just for my health, man. Like, uh, Mish and I almost died a few times. You know, like I don't know, man. If your body ain't ready for Southeast Asia, start in a small city. <laughs> no, that's true. Like, I, I spent time in Manila, and it's the only place I've ever been in the entire world where I didn't rent a car. Right. It's like forget this. Yeah, fuck that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I know. We know people from Manila. I heard Manila's cool, but like. Yeah. Big dirty city. Manila, in my opinion, no offense to the people in the Philippines, it's a place you go to get to wherever else you're going in the Philippines. Right. <laughs> like a transit. It like, definitely. You definitely. know, people say that about Saigon, but I lived there for like four years and I, I found that there was a lot of things about it that were really, really, really good that aren't really at first visible if you're just coming there, you know? But yeah, Manila may be very much a city you got to go and spend some time in to get to know it. It's so too big. Love it, but makes sense. It's so congested. Yeah, yeah, no, you do it while you're young. That's true. That's you know, go to places like Saigon, the Manila, you know, even Bangkok is. It's got like the metro and whatnot, but the air quality there is horrible too, man. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, that's the thing with the Balkans. Like, they have pollution here, but it's very easy to get out of the city. Very easy. Like, it's very, very easy to just get a cheap rent a car and go somewhere, like... And then here, look, you don't even need a uh, car here. You could walk it to everything. Everything's accessible. Incredibly walkable city. And the, what people don't realize who watch at home on this mm. is Toronto, it seems big when you're watching YouTubers and stuff do it, but it's a really small town. You're out of here in, what, 20 minutes driving? I mean, 30? You're yeah. out of town. No, very small. I think the traffic's a little crazy. That's true. I like I like that you were saying earlier before we were filming that you were looking at um, being based in Belgrade. Uh, I'm based there for about two months. Okay. Is yeah. there a reason why you chose uh, Belgrade over Tirana? Yeah, there is. There's a story to it. All it has right. nothing to do with the goodness or badness of either one, though. So word, word. I'm married to a Filipino citizen, and so... She only gets 90 days in Albania. Okay. Our 90 days were up. We had to go somewhere else. So, uh, Belgrade let them come for 90 days. So we're border hopping. Right. Okay. Yeah. That, well, that's a thing to do. I mean, the metro system attracts me a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Like, I kind of want to be in a city that has a metro because after being in Saigon for like four years on the back of a motorbike, I miss trains, bro. The, uh, the metro system that they got, I liked it. As far as the uh, the above ground, they're, they're supposed to build a proper metro, underground subway. They've been talking about it for years. Right. But the uh, electric car system they have is really usable. Word. But it takes like two weeks to figure out how it works. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh -huh. Right on, bro. So how long have you been outside of the States now? I left in April. Like, that's it? First that's time? That's it. That's it. Wow. It took, so they shut us down. The uh, Supreme Court shut us down. Yep, you were practicing law. Yeah, yep. in March, and uh, I had a house to sell. I had all my stuff, so I sold every damn thing I had. And, okay. Uh, banked it and took off, but it takes a while to do that. Plus, I had 
trial practice I had, even though we weren't having trials, I had to get those people other uh, attorneys. Wow. All right, so this is all new, man. This is yeah. like a new fucking outside of, a, out of the Matrix. Yeah, it's a new chapter. Whoa. I'm, what is it, red pilling now? I'm telling you, man, like after you get outside of the States, you start to realize how like almost everything they promise you there is a fucking lie. That's true. You have real freedom in these countries. Like, I mean, you might have some adjusting to do, you know, but yep. I think you get a really good lifestyle for, you know, the trade-offs are worth it to me. Like, I don't want to live in America ever again. I mean, I've been outside for nearly a decade now. If I had to go back, I think my head would fucking explode. No, I understand it. The, the funny thing about same way in Asia as it is here in the Balkans. Right. They'll have crazy laws on the books. Okay. But nobody cares about them. Right, they, right, right. I mean, I mean, you look around here. Look, nobody's dealing with uh, the worldwide issues and stuff that are going on. Everybody's no. just living free. You know? it's, a, it's a very, very relaxed, different type of energy. Yeah. But, you know, I was in Vietnam and it was sort of the same until they went completely insane. And now they got the military out in the streets and like... They got fucking people having their food delivered by military one day, one day the ward boss, one day the military. They can't figure out what the fuck they're doing, they're coming or going. People are freaked out because like one of my homeboys, he was writing to me when I was meeting you guys, he's Vietnamese, and he was saying, can't go outside, can't buy food, can't buy water, has to wait for it to be delivered by either a ward boss or the military. And here we are walking down the street, everything's open. Yeah, I mean, it's, this absolutely, in my opinion right now, is the place to be if you're wanting to go somewhere else. Oh, yeah. Outside the United States, which for me, absolutely. Have, have you been up to, um, like, Ukraine or any of these places? No. That's my summer plan. Have not been there. I've been, so far this trip, I've been to Bosnia, Herzegovina, Serbia, Montenegro. Okay. Passed through Macedonia real quick. I was in Germany very briefly. Greece okay. last week and then uh, here well I'll say this man I haven't been to that many places here yet but I've been mostly putting time in here in Tirana and some time in Macedonia Macedonia is definitely worth going back to that's a nice place I'm going in a few days I hope to spend some time there and check it out yeah I mean Skopje is a trip man that place like really is pretty crazy I liked it a lot um, I, I seen a little bit of uh, Awkward and that was really really good like you know castle this type of shit like medieval city mm -hmm. I'm Older than medieval, but I think like the current structures are like something like that. This is like my favorite side of Tirana Yeah, well Scott when you lived here. Yep. The first time you were down all the way down by um, What's up guys? Way past 20. You were down by uh, <laughs> Where the Lana River is on uh, Kavai. The other side. Yeah, yep. you were down by all the new construction. Yep. Um, Della Georgia, I think it's called, pronounced. You were down that way. Now that is actually, if you were to buy an apartment, that's actually the best place to live for the one reason. It's the newest. It's the newest, yep. so they have the best insulation, everything is mm -hmm. new in this apartment. Everywhere else you live here, the construction is not the newest. A lot mm -hmm. of stuff you see is gonna take a couple of years to get done. But that, if you tell anybody in Albania, they go, oh, I'm looking at an apartment there, they'll be like, oh, pff, that's the place to get. Because a lot of the old buildings here are just, their infrastructure is terrible. Yeah. And I've seen some of that. built that area so you have like cafes and everything right under it, gyms, everything's right there. Plus there's businesses all lined through there on the backside as well. And you're right, you're right there where you, you're around the land so you go left or right and get anywhere you want to yeah. go. Yeah. So it's it's the prime spot if you're gonna if you're gonna invest or you want a really nice apartment, that's the best place to go. Not cheap, but you gotta watch. Because yeah. you can find like a, a one plus one for three fifty there and in nice places. So one, that's a little expensive for a one plus one. But it'll be gone within days. It's, like, they just don't last. It's, if, you, if it's your first time in Toronto, it's also a really good place to rent the first time because you've got, you can figure out the city real yeah. easy there. The is you're, you're kind of far off from there. That's true. It is a, it is a walk. But mm. you, the thing is, there's buses that go down that way. The yep. orange bus takes you straight to the center. There's yeah, the 15. Bus too that goes the same way. But the orange bus takes you everywhere. So Where are you? the orange bus is your friend. So oh, 40 yes. cents. This way, if you want to hit someone in Kavaya, you just have to come up. Walking it is a pain in the ass. It is, yeah. It is a pain it's in the ass. It's about 20 minutes. It's, the, it's probably the one walk I would say out of all the walks, because it's straight. Yeah. But there's not many cool things down between that and where 21 is. No. It's more like uh, like they have a big like medical places and stuff like that. There's nothing really cool that draws your attention. So it's pharmacies. Kind of a, it's a crap, yeah, it's a crappy walk. <laughs> but it's a nice place if you wanted to get a nice 
new clean place um stylish more modern those are the places to go and like i said if you plan on living here long term and going through the winter or the summer with your ac that's going to be your best bet plus the yeah. walls uh you're not gonna hear your neighbors yeah the you're insulation not, yeah you're not better. gonna hear all the traffic because everybody complains here about all the buildings that were built during communist times that they're poorly constructed and the insulation is not there plus also too you got to deal with the possible earthquakes yeah. So those new buildings are going to have a better situation. Because people here really do worry about the earthquakes. I don't blame them. You'll hear them. They're like, oh, it's hot today. I hope it's not an earthquake. I'm like, would you shut up? Why are you on the earthquake? But they really do concern themselves with the earthquake. Because 2019 was the last earthquake earthquake here. And um, it was terrible. And if you go to Cumbernaut, which I did a video on that at the outskirts, they have a lot of damage there. There's also damage if you go to um, Daiti Mountain. Now, yeah, yeah. People, when you look at the word Daiti, it's very confusing. But it's really just die T. Like, yeah, if you, if you the word die, D I E, and the letter T, die T. Like, that's how you say it. So, but it is, if you take that cable car and you look down, we're gonna go this way. Okay. They shut up this market here at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, but sometimes the guys stay open a little later. So, this is all your inexpensive stuff that's coming up. Um, but if you take that cable car up to the mountain, to the main area, the, uh, you'll see a lot of homes that were damaged in the earthquake. Yeah. So, when you focus on it, it's very interesting. Let me see real quick. Yeah. yeah so the in, so the reason why I wanted to take this walk was because the name of the district is 21 Digitori or D, D Tori, how would you say uh, it? Yeah, I think it's like Detori. 21 Detori. But everybody here just says 21. So 21 Detori and local people just call it 21. Yeah, they say 21. So the reason why we wanted to take a stroll over here one is I could say 21 Jump Street of Tirana, brush your teeth, and two because I heard this very nice accommodation, like in terms of apartments, like housing, this type of thing. I heard it's really nice apartments over there. And it looks like, you know, it would be a spot that I think a prospective expat would be interested in. Yeah, like, you know what's funny? Like you, you were saying, you were saying how uh, one of the biggest things I notice with people, when people come here for the first time, they've never been here before, they don't really look at the, their Airbnb map to figure out, okay, I'm here. Exactly. And then try to, they think it's this big city. And they're always like, oh, I want to be close to the center. And I'm like, no, you well, don't have to be. You don't have to be. You're further off being a little out. You'll get more for your money. And you won't have to deal with so much noise. Um, because everybody doesn't realize that you just walk the city. Yeah, you, you just walk. It's really walk. I mean, and the buses, you can use them. But I mean, taxi fare here, really, to go from the Lana River on the right. other side down there to the city centers, it's four or five bucks. You know, so it's nothing. So this is the fake market. They don't like me filming here. Yeah, you, know, you get looks. a little sketchy. A little nerved. Doesn't matter how much money I spend here buying some of it. Can I film? No, 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 no. But it's uh. I just face it away. If they look weird, I'll, I'll be filming, and then no, I just don't like it in here. For some I reason. get the look, and I'm like, oh, on this side. <laughs> they they uh, they'll come out and say, oh, please don't film me. Please don't film me. We had one. Oh, we did a video here with uh, my friend Bert and Miles. And we went to, on Miss Sherry, uh, a gelato place. And on the corner, the gelato place is pretty popular. They also sell like Burke and Burke and like pizza and stuff like that, right? And they're making this video about, uh, can you eat for less than $5 right, a day? Yeah. So we're making the video and she's paying the girl. Miles is making the video, paying the girl. And the girl goes, the girl goes, please go. Just, just, just go, go. <laughs> and we're just like dying laughing. We're like, did she really just say, just please go, just go. And she really did. So we painted the joke where we were like, just go. Just please go. You know, I, that's something I noticed all over Albania, though. It wasn't just, you know, the fake markets is that people, they, they freak out about cameras. Like I yeah. go over into a gelato shop on the street. And I'm like, hey, can I film your gelato? And they're like, no. Now, I don't want to put this information out here, but I did find out from somebody that, so we have all these gelato places around, right? Yeah. This is very interesting. I never thought about this. So you really can't drink the water here, right? Mm -hmm. So unless you, like people ask me, oh, well, can I get a filter system? Yeah, they do sell filter systems, but you still have to figure out like what's gonna be the end result for you drinking. So one of the funny things, one of somebody told me here that there was an article written, I think last year or something like that, where they went around and tested all the gelato places to see if they're using filtered water, bottled water, or local water. And there are a couple that are very popular here that had the lowest ratings with the most bacteria in them. I don't wanna put that information out there, but it is a printed article and I was like, what? And the person was telling me which one, and I was like, wait a second. I know friends that shot videos there, and they were like eating ice, eating a gelato. I lived in Vietnam for four years. If that shit didn't kill me, Tirana ain't gonna. 
<laughs> and I wasn't in some pretty little island like fucking Fuquoc, man. I was in Saigon. <laughs> the air quality here is like a spring day compared to that shit. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, it's still bad. They have problems with pollution. You get a little sore throats and stuff like. Yeah, you definitely do get uh, like sore throats. Like I get that a little bit more here. Yeah, for sure. Know, that, I, that I didn't get like in Istanbul. And I noticed that I didn't get it all winter long. And in the last two months, I tend, I think because of the increase of the, the weather with the, the pollution, is uh, it's better in the wintertime. Here. It is one of the top polluted cities in the world if you look at the rankings. Um, but if you compare it to Southeast Asia, here it's There's just... There's an orange bus. Oh, shit. Here it's mostly just pollution from the cars. It's not pollution like industrial pollution. And a lot of the pollution in Asia is industrial pollution. All right, so since we're on Kavaya Street, Kavaya Street is known for its bike lane in the center. So it's a very nice bike lane. And, and usually like once a week, or two, the city actually maintains the trees. They prune everything back, everything. So on the bike lane, you're allowed to walk on the bike lane. And they actually have a counter down here, a digital counter for how many people are on it per day and per week. This mosque right here, there was, a, there was an attack on this mosque earlier this year. Five people were stabbed in the afternoon, about 2.30 in the afternoon. Uh, nobody died. And Thank they, God. They didn't, the cops didn't catch the guy. The people got the people and they were beating the guy up at the restaurant next door. They had him corner on the ground, they were beating him up. And then the article said the cops apprehended him. But there was a video that surfaced. It was the people that were sitting next door. Actually, well, good. They should beat him. his ass. What a He's alive, fucking, though. They didn't well, kill him. Well, that's cool. I mean, uh, if you like tumi, says a lot. Tumi means smoke. So that's just smoked meats. That's, one of, that's a very happening tumi. It's probably always one of the most crowded tumis. They're not gonna see it well from over here, though. That was the most crowded. But this whole this whole block is known for its Tumi restaurants. So if you walk down Kavaya, you're gonna see Tumi after Tumi after Tumi. Or uh, I'm gonna pronounce it wrong, but it's Zagara, which is on the corner right here. Zagara means barbecue. So one smoke, one's barbecue, and then there's another one, Tavana, which is more like rotisserie. See, so, look, look, you can see it a little better now, guys, because there's not all the trees and shit. Like that building there, the yellow one. That it says Zagara. That's that's what he's talking about. They're, they're cheap places to eat. You can even if you don't eat meat, this they have our, side dishes this is and shit. Door. This is a seafood restaurant. It's a little expensive. They have one in Doris. It's on the water. It's Doris has this little tiny boardwalk, like a Jersey Shore boardwalk with little games and shit. And our tour is right there. It's very nice, um, but a little expensive. Little yeah, expensive. I, I heard right now is not the time to be in Doris. I'm gonna try to go check it out in September when it's quieter. I think it sounds like uh, off-season travel is better in Albania. This Tumi King Pills is the legendary Tumi King Pills. That's like the, the famous one of them. Okay. But the one down there, next to the mosque, is the one that's always much more packed. Oh, so, so but, you'll right. get locals. Makes even sense. the foreigners that come here will argue which their favorite Tumi is. Okay. Because you go for like the lamb chops and stuff like that, um, or you know your fresh smoked goat, whatever sheep, a lamb. You go for your uh, people compare the chafta. Like, who, who has the better chafta? So if you're trying to eat on a budget, Tumi places are one of the best places to eat if you want salad and meat. Because you can go to a Tumi place and you chafta, chafta is normally 25 to 30 cents each. Okay. They'll offer you bread, so bread's gonna be free. Right, water is usually about 60 cents for a bottle of water. And then you get a salad anywhere from $2 to about four fifty dollars depending on the salad you want. So, and then their chicken kebabs are normally like a dollar to dollar twenty each. So you can actually eat healthy salad protein, and they do grilled vegetables at all these places too. They're normally like two dollars for grilled vegetables. Yeah, so I can't beat that. Food. Yeah, yeah. If you want to eat that way, you can. Well, the other option is sablacha, which is not healthy. Mm. That's like a dollar seventy on average. Uh, hamburgers. They're not an American style hamburgers, but they're going to be like same difference, dollar fifty, dollar seventy. You could eat at a decent mid mid range restaurant for like three to four dollars a plate. You know, there's if you're not eating meat, you could eat here for yeah. like. Two yeah. people for ten dollars yeah. very easily. Um, it's it's. Uh, it also depends on yeah. If you're eating meat, the price is going to then be on what meat you're eating. Yeah. So that's like that comes the next thing. The chopped is always going to be the cheapest. The problem with savlacha being cheap, there's hardly any meat on it. Right. So if you're looking for protein, savlacha for us in New York is more like a gyro. Right. Gyro, but we're used to meat. They fill instead of meat, they fill it with French fries. Right. And the right. The problem here is most places don't make good French fries. So they'll be like soggy or uncooked. Right. So you're eating this thing and you're like, this is, this is not good. And they love slapping mustard on it, which is very bizarre. They'll put tzatziki sauce or the as they say it or whatever. Right, right. Here, uh, mustard, ketchup, 
and the DGC sauce, and you're like, this is a weird combination of flavors. I fuck with a place called Oda for people who don't eat meat. They, um, yeah, it's they, really good. And they have the Oda in Blaku, and there's an Oda here too. Yeah, the Oda's on the other side. Yeah, it's, it's, there's an, no, there's Oda here. Oh, there's another one there's here. An Oda here yeah. Oh, there's one in New Market too. This place has probably some of the most, most restaurants, actually. This block mm. has the most restaurants. Yo, let's come over here again then. Shit, I've been trying to eat here for a minute. Every time I come over, there's like something happening, like they're closed early here. And then another good thing here is like fruits and vegetables. Like you'll have these alleyways where the whole street is just fruit and vegetables. Word. The whole entire thing going straight. And this one goes straight through to. Uh, not just going straight to the Muslim Sharia. You'd have to go with side street. But it eventually will go to Muslim Sharia if you want. You have to go through the back. Yeah, the ones yeah. up there go straight through. You do a little bit of this. Well, yeah. up here, you really can't make a lot of straight cut throughs. Down there, you can. Mm. Because here's how, like, if you rent an Airbnb, a lot of times you're going down a back alleyway to get to your door. Right. So a lot of these here are going to be those back alleyways. Same back here. So if you're off, you got a listing that says off Kavaya Street. Right. It could be anywhere here. And you can honestly walk two to three minutes. Right. In a straight path just to get to your apartments. No, I like this neighborhood. When I first came out here, this is the, the second choice for an apartment was like right around this neighborhood. But I wanted to go deep. I want to go right into the heart of 21 Jump Street right now, bro. We're going to walk right into this motherfucker. Like, you know, like. Well, I mean, you might open. You mean it's Opus here. Opus here. So when is the district technically 21 Digitory? Or uh, it's right it, on the end of the corner here. Okay, so what are we now? This is like, is it, this? What would you call this district if you had to this, give it a name? There, I don't. There is no name. No name. See, yeah. that's the thing that fucking trips me out with Toronto, man. Is a lot only, of these neighborhoods. Only don't, some neighborhoods have names. I noticed that, and they're not always specific. There's not always a reason why. No, but if you look at the map, they'll be boxed off. You know, like you have Don Bosco, you have Ali Demi, you have uh, Kuna Parisi, you have, um, you have Blaku. Sure. But that's but, really it. And the rest are kind of sketchy of what they really are. They're the only ones that are kind of really blocked off of what you can look at the map and say, oh, okay, I'm standing in this area. Well, I mean, I find it fucking interesting, man. There's like, there's like so many like people who just identify where they live based on the name of the road. Right. Like you're off, you know, the street that goes to Doris, Albasani Street, you know? Right. So like it's it's cool in a way, but it's definitely hard to organize your mind around, you know, like because right, a lot of the streets could be very long, and if they don't tell you what they're by, mm -hmm. you would have no idea because they don't even know. Like oh, I live 21 Kavaya Street. There is no 21 Kavaya Street, so you'd be like oh, I live down by the Conad, by Kavaya. Oh okay. So then you'd have to go down here by Conad and be like all right, this is where I have to be. It's the same thing with delivery service for food and stuff here. Word. There is no like oh, I live at this address. You just say, oh, I live across from this building, or I live with this building that has, you know, this sign on it. Mm. And they'll be like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a trip. Because I'm used to in Vietnam, you would think, but when you first look at the place, there's like, oh, no way this works. But they have like a ward system, a district and system. you know what's big here, believe it or not, they don't have Facebook Marketplace. Uh, what's big here, they don't have eBay either, really. You know what's big here? They sell on Instagram, and they yeah. deliver it to you. Yeah, So fair. it's just like delivery for food. So if you want clothes, like jewelry, whatever they sell. They, the big thing here is Instagram because it's easy for them to promote it here because Instagram's kind of big here in a way. Right. Um, so yeah, you'll see people just roll up. If you live in a very populated area, like I live in Crystal Center. So everybody says, oh, I live in Crystal Center. And they go wait outside for the delivery guy to show up, whether it's food or whatever they're delivering. It could be the weed man, it could be anything. So everybody just shows up and they just stand there and they just stand there with their packages and wait for somebody to show up. Are you, uh, you got this? You got that? And you're like, yeah. Oh, now we got some break from that sunlight there, son. Oh my Lord. I'm filming and I'm like, these motherfuckers are going to be seeing sp sunspots and all kinds so here, of shit. So here, behind here is all embassies. Oh, right on. So it's the Greek embassy, the Chinese embassy, the German embassy, and the block is there for the embassies. And there's a back alleyway right behind this restaurant that runs along the walls. I lived back there for six weeks. My neighborhood is also embassies, the US, the Italian. I live right behind the Italian, across the street from the US. Like, I don't know, I, I, I gotta say, I've never really seen a neighborhood full of embassies that's all that bad. No, <laughs> Usually they're kind of uh, nice places. All the embassies here are from <laughs> communist times. So oh. very old, very wow. old, the security's very old. Now we had the election here in April, April 25th, I think the election was. And like two days prior to the election, I think two days after the election, okay. all the embassies had extra added military security. Word. Because they were afraid that it was going to be sketchy because 
not that we should talk about politics, but the man did get elected to a third term. It's oh, you can, yeah, not allowed. Yeah, so it was not people a great. People get mad at me. Sorry, guys, but people get mad at me when a lot of my Albanian uh, viewers that don't live in Albania, maybe they were born of Albanian blood, but they don't live here, haven't lived in a long time. They get mad when I say something about what's actually here on the ground. And I say, oh, come here, come here. We'll have a coffee together. And I'll, I'll let you meet other Albanians that actually live their whole lives here. And they'll have a different concept of what it is to live here versus whatever. So everybody's got their, their, their things, you know? Everybody's got their differences. And if there's like new sites you can follow, they follow all the corruption in this city or this country. Mm. And it's just like, uh, just like what's illegal in America, it's all no bid contracts. They call right. them tenders here. But they do research it. And some of them are astronomical, like the dumbest shit in the world. And it's always somebody's a somebody. And, you know, they get these multi million. There's one with a candy that they're supposed to remove because the candy has plastic in it. Oh, God. There's ice cream and everything has red, has red plastic in it, right? So the guy that imports, the importer who does it, he's some like government guy, um, but he owns his own business. He gets no big contracts and he's worth billions here. And I he's mean, he's the guy that imports the thing. So it's, it's just a joke. They, you know? Yeah, but they didn't invent it. That shit is nah. everywhere, bro. <laughs> no, they didn't invent it, but it's still, that's, that, that's more populated here because they don't care where you come from here. They just care about the money. About the money. I think this is less corrupt than Vietnam. There's a lot, it works, it seems to work a lot better. Like, <laughs> you know? I think it depends on who you ask. I mean, I don't know if you've seen the level over there, man. Like. There was a lady last year, she killed five people, drunk, just drunk, smashed into a bunch of they, people. They do it here though too. Yeah, but she paid. They, she only paid like four or five grand to not go to prison. <laughs> she killed a few motherfuckers. Well, here you might do a year, but it's like, she, I love the wiring I here. You gotta focus day. on the wiring. The wiring is some of the top notch shit. Nah, this, some, this is nothing, bro. This motherfucker been in America too long. <laughs> yeah. Look at this fancy wiring. Woo! <laughs> I gotta show him the one from from like Bangkok, Saigon. Yeah. The shit dripping into fucking water, yeah. like sparks shooting out of it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with living in uh, you know in New York. I support no man, but I haven't been in developed countries in a long time, so this is fucking Switzerland for me right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I feel like I'm walking down the street in like London or some shit. <laughs> you know? It's a lot different, man. Like, we were in Nepal for a bit after the earthquake. You want to talk about a place that was fucked? Oh, my God. They had a fuel shortage. There was no fuel coming in from the Indian border. So they had closed the border with India. They have these separatist things that India does every once in a while to fuck with Nepal's elections. Okay. And they fucking closed it off. And there was petrol queues, bro. Like, miles of motherfuckers sitting on cans waiting just to get some gas. Really? And hey, oh, bro, Red Cross tents everywhere. The fucking people living in and the Chinese Red Cross shelters. It was fucking crazy. We were there like what two months after the earthquake, yeah. you know, and we, and then we spent like a few months in Kathmandu. Have you have you ever been to uh, have you ever been to the Himalayas, bro? Nope, never have. Nepal was one of my stops. If it hadn't been for COVID, that I wanted to do though. So, so how'd you end up in Albania? Basically, it was, uh, I could come in, my wife could come in visa-free, and uh, they were open during the pandemic. This is, this is 21. Oh, we're this area here. is like 21. 21, jo 21 Jump Street, son, yo, everybody tuck their chain. But the street, the street here is the corner, that they, everybody identifies that as 21 on the corner. Oh, so like the malaria that's on the corner, that, the location is known as 21. Yo, so it's like the 21 Jump Street of Tirana. We got like all kinds of craziness going on. It's just like everywhere you look, there's a Mercedes, somebody, you know, shining, flossing and looking beautiful. You know, I'm loving it already, bro. I feel like I feel like I found the promised land, the chosen land, you know? Yo, somebody commented in one of my last videos that they thought Tirana looked grim. I'm like, this city is fucking awesome, bro. You crazy? I think it all depends on what people have their hearts set on. You know, I think some people like, set on my nuts. No, nah, some people, you know what it is? I was telling him about this. Because you know, he was he was set on going to Southeast Asia. I was set on going to Southeast Asia. But there are people who are so their mind is so focused on Southeast Asia that they can't see anything else. You know, they don't realize that it's kind of closed off for them right now to a point. And or you know there's a lot of them data online. 
Yo, I'm telling you. And, and the girl, they like, oh, I, I was starting over. I already gave her four, four, ten thousand dollars, some shit like that. Southeast Asia is like what I do. It's my it's a big chunk of my business. And bro, that shit ain't gonna be cool for a minute. Like, there is some discussion of trying to have things organized by October, but like, we are talking about like a military police state situation in Vietnam right now. Like, the military is literally delivering food in Vietnam. Like, you can't go outside of the house at all. Like, you can't go to buy water. You gotta have it delivered. And then they're changing the rules every two days. Like, people, one minute it's the ward boss who delivers the food, the next minute it's the military. So, you know, people are gonna get forgotten. There's gonna be a lot of people who don't get food yeah <laughs> and the situation is just gonna get crazy so if you're really content on Southeast Asia listen I love Southeast Asia I sell Southeast Asia it's a big chunk of my business wait a month or two fucking come to the Balkans and chill and if you want to stay out here I'll help you get residency this is like what I'm doing out here but it's good out here like you have a high quality of life for a very reasonable price and look we're on 21 jump street and nobody's even fucking hemmed us up or checked our pockets everybody's been super nice like people kind of like think it's weird that these weird fucking foreigners are filming themselves but shit it's fun i'm loving i'm loving the the 21 uh, digitory over here bro so is this the ring no. Ring is that way. Ring but, is uh, about 10 minute walk that way. Okay. But doesn't the ring go all the way around? Like if you keep going down here, you're going to hit no. the ring too? No? You can, yeah, you can hit the ring from here as well. Uh, and actually, no, wait, I'm trying to think if you're going to hit the ring from here. It's more desolate down that way as far as it's just more, like this is all shops. Okay. So when you hit the, this is the actual ring now. Like the ring is here. So the big statue okay. is here. So. Uh, Ruga Dorasi, Dora Street, that hits there, and it's a big circle, and that'll take you to the bus terminal, the airport, Doris in general. So here, it takes you a little further out. All right, so let's dip down an alley or something. Let's dip down a, a side street, or uh, I don't know. Let's get let's go somewhere that is not the normal part. What's what's the main? Well, if you walk behind here, okay, it's all residential, but um, it's very old back this way. Very old. A lot of the old residential wrapping around this way. All right. So there's a ton of like cafes. They're all named like villa with numbers. So all right, like, let's go there Villa then. 21, Villa 7, Villa 8. Let's, let's do that then. Let's do that. What do you think of when you think of Albania? I think of opportunity. I think of a country that's open. I think of a country that wants long stay expats, that wants people to come and invest, wants new ideas, and is looking towards the West. I think that Albania is a beautiful country with incredible landscapes that can offer a very comfortable lifestyle at a very reasonable price. We will help navigate your journey to becoming an expat in Albania. We're working with some of the top lawyers. We can help establish businesses. We can help you get your residency. We can help you get real estate. We can arrange almost any contact that you might need for the process of moving here in almost any city in the country. We will simplify the process. We'll make it a lot easier for you to move to a country that maybe in the past would have been more of a challenge. With our help, it's going to be a walk in the park. from Canada, hook up with the New York Nomad if you want a smooth ride into Vietnam or any Southeast Asian countries. Hey, my name is Aaron. Get in contact with the New York Nomad. If you want to get into Vietnam, hit them up. They'll get you in securely and professionally. Yo, this is Uncle Hollywood. I'm telling you right now, the New York Nomad got me a job. He's legit. Hit him up. Check him out. New York Nomad set me up in Vietnam. <laughs> Yo, my man got me a job. Come to Vietnam. Hey, what's up guys? You thinking about coming to Vietnam? You're not sure where to start. You've heard a lot of things online. You don't know what's true. You don't know what's not. We offer a consulting service where we help you get on your feet in Vietnam. We give you advice on negotiating contracts with employers. We help you with real estate agents, visa agents that are reliable and that you can trust. And we help you get started in this amazing country and get on your feet. We help you get into different opportunities that might be more difficult for you if you were just landing in the country on your own. And we help you avoid a lot of the, the pitfalls and problems that you could have as a newcomer here. We provide 
provide you with reliable job recruiters, visa agents, real estate agents, and advice. If you guys are thinking about coming to Vietnam, hit us up for a consultation. We'll help you get started, help you get on your feet, and hopefully you'll love Vietnam as much as we do.